Hello, hi everybody. I am Thekla Betridou, YouTuber, psychologist and author. Today it's Friday the 15th of January 2021 and today's subject is relevant to all of our concerns about this year and the next years and how we can become lucky in life. This is a subject that we have analyzed in Greek videos many times and some of you asked to analyze also in English, to produce an English version of this subject. And uh, my opinions that are going to be heard here are uh, based on this excellent book that I have read back in 2004. And uh, in order to give you more information about this book, which is called The Luck Factor, I will read to you a book review of this book written by Ivo Dias de Sousa. And it says, book review, The Luck Factor by Richard Wiseman. I will include the link to this book review on the description of the video so, con so you can read it yourselves. The Luck Factor by Richard Wiseman. I wonder if you are curious about luck like me. If so, I bet you've asked to yourself many times if luck was a genetic trait or just a random good chance. Everybody knows what it, luck, means. Luck signifies to either have success or failure, which apparently is brought by chance rather than through one's own actions. This is what we usually believe, that our luck is not destined by us, we cannot deduce our luck, our luck just happens. And in many cultures they also have some words about luck, like destiny. But is it true that luck is such a random phenomenon? And if not, could we train ourselves to become more lucky? And if so, how could we do it? The book, The Luck Factor, The Scientific Study of the Lucky Mind, that was written by Richard Wiseman back in 2003, tries to answer these and other questions about luck from a scientific point of view, as the book is the result of various years of scholarly research on luck. Richard Wiseman is a professor of psychology at the University of Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom, who has done considerable research for various years on why some people are more lucky than others. Wiseman was a magician before graduating in psychology from University College London, UCL. He has a PhD in psychology from the University of Edinburgh. According to Wiseman's book, even though luck seems to be the product of a genetic trait, of a genetic trait what plays its most critical role isn't genetic. Even though luck seems to be the product of a genetic trait, what plays its most critical role isn't genetic. This is good news, as it means that we can actually increase our good fortune in life. What exactly this means? What exactly this means is that one should be prepared to recognize what type of events life puts in front of ourselves and act accordingly to take as much advantage as possible of such events. To have luck or bad luck in our lives depends for a large extent on ourselves. Whether we become luckier or not depends on our state of mind, the way we think, and most importantly, the way we act. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I have tried this shift of perception in my life after having read this book some time ago, and I have confirmed personally what Wiseman's book points out based on various scientific studies. I have to admit that I also was very pleased to read this book because uh, I agree with its perceptions. And the reason I agree is that I was brought up by a very lucky man, my father. My father is a very uh, confident person. He's a very intelligent person and a very practical person. And he has this way of turning all the events in his life into his own benefit. And I'm very lucky to have been raised by him because he inspired me to have this perception in life. And when in 2004, back in 16 years, I came across this book, I was so excited, so excited that there is scientific research to prove that the way, we, uh, the way I was taught to live my life is a good way. As an example in his book, Dr. Richard Wiseman describes his experiment with a mixed group of people who considered themselves lucky or unlucky. Part of the experiment was that all the participants were supposed to meet Wiseman at the pub, where a five pound note would be left outside by the entrance of the pub, 
always in the same place. The striking result was that the participants who claimed to be lucky picked up the note from the ground, whereas the ones who thought themselves to be unlucky didn't even notice the note. There was a five uh, pound note left outside on purpose in the, en in the entrance of the pub. People who believed themselves to be lucky, they saw the note and they picked it up. People who believed they were convinced that they were unlucky, they didn't even notice the five bank, bank note on the floor. Because this, <laughs> this book was written in 2003, and the experiments uh, were before the book, a five bank note at that time meant a lot. This experiment and many others led wi lead Wiseman to confirm that the way we look at reality influences what we can obtain for it. In other words, if we believe that we are going to meet interesting people, we actually have more chances to end up finding them. The same goes when we think the world is full of dishonest people or lacking fine opportunities. Our mind works in a funny way. It is always looking for reassurances for what we already think by paying more attention towards what is already part of our vision of the world. For example, if we think someone is behaving badly, we will start to notice all the elements that reinforce our view. The opposite is also true. If we believe in someone's good heart, we will tend to see what can, what can support our feeling. We tend to see what can support our feeling. We make up our mind and then we look for elements which make us right. That's how our brain works. The world offers you largely what goes on in your mind, not because the world is just that, the world is complex and varied, but because your personal antenna are tuned in to get what your mind is busy thinking about it. In the case of, to of Dr. Wiseman's experiment, it was easier for the people who thought themselves lucky to see the money outside the pub. What's more, those people picked up the note, which only confirms their optimistic view of the world. On the other hand, noticing the bill outside the pub was something that would have challenged the delusion of those considering themselves unlucky. The fact that they totally ignored it could only reinforce their belief. Even though we don't condition the world around us, the way we look at it matters tremendously. If we don't believe that there are good opportunities for us out there, we won't even notice them when we will finally find them right in front of our faces. On the other hand, if we believe that the world is filled with great possibilities for us, we'll probably end up finding them. That's why optimism is the way to go. The crucial question is, can we learn to be more lucky? According to Wiseman, the answer to this question is yes, as he believes that luck is based largely on four psychological principles that can be learned and improved. One of them is that people with luck pay attention of the luck opportunities, create them and act according to them. For instance, they cultivate a social network with interesting people and are receptive to different experiences. The second principle is that a person with luck takes good decisions based on intuition and hunches. They listen to their intuition and take measures to improve it. Our gut instinct, we say so many times about our gut instinct, how we should listen to our gut instinct and try to improve it and try to empower it. The third principle, expectations regarding the, fu regarding the future of lucky people, help them to achieve their dreams and ambitions. As an example, they think that their luck will be maintained in the future and persist in their goals even if they fail. The final principle is that lucky people transform bad luck into opportunities. This principle is manifested in particular by emphasizing the positive aspects of their hazards and taking steps to prevent such situations to happen in the future. Personally, says the author, I believe this book a valuable ma manual as it might help you to create more fortunate opportunities in your life. The four psychological principles defended by Dr. Wiseman can be applied in our daily life to improve our luck. The book sometimes uses scientific jargon too much, don't forget that the author is a university professor, but it is definitely worth the effort of reading it. And I also should uh, read some words about the, uh, the author, Ivo Dias de Sousa, is a Portuguese writer born in Mozambique. Ivo is also a professor at Universidade Alberta, Portugal, giving courses on information management. 
Currently, Ivo is interested in using his experience on information management to construct applications. And you can find the link on the article for smartphones in collaboration with others. Ivo holds a master in statistics and information management, Universidad de Nova de Lisboa, and the PhD in information management, Universidad de Alberta. Amongst his main interests are information management, psychology of luck, and literature. I, I really feel very lucky for finding this article online and reading to you. I say again that the, the link of the article, article will be in the description of this book. I'm so happy, I'm so lucky to have read this book and I'm so happy to have this opportunity to recommend this book to you and recommend to follow the basic principles to make your life luckier, make yourself luckier. Um, life is indeed complex. We cannot predict our future. We cannot change some situations that are difficult at the, at the time. For example, now at the beginning of 2021, we are facing the pandemic, the world pandemic of COVID-19 and its, uh, its restrictions and the hazards it uh, creates and we live in uncertainty. But this does not mean the end of the world. I mentioned my father before. My father, who is an inspirational man. My father is a Greek Orthodox priest and a theologist, but he's so innovative and so interested in technology and he reads almost everything. And he's a perfect example for a brain that never goes old. He's 40, he's, he was born in 1949, so he's like 71 years now. He will be 72 on the 29th of June this year. He's like 26 years older than me, but he feels mar much more youthful than me ever. I don't know where he got it. I think it's a charisma or a gift. Um, I think it's a good combination, combination of the uh, fine traits and characteristics both his parents had and he has managed to leave out of his personality the negative characteristics both and traits both his parents had um, and i was talking to him this uh, last night on a video call and we were talking about the pandemic some days ago he lost one of his closest friend of covid and we were talking on the phone on a video call and he cried two days ago. And I was so relieved to see him cry and see him express his emotions as a real man and strong man. And last night I called him again to see if he's doing well. Of course he cried again. I think that he cried because he had me on the other end of the video call and he felt that he, it was okay to be himself because you have a very close relationship as father and daughter. And we, we made some chit chat about the situation. Okay, we talked about his friend, that he was a very valuable person in his life. He was also a priest, that he was loved and he offered so much love and grace in the world. And um, we gave him a eulogy between us. And he said that he would not be able to attend the funeral, but he's praying for him and that he feels very happy to have had him in his life. And I go on and I say, this ducking pandemic caused so much chaos in our lives that, for example, I'm abroad and I cannot go and visit at this time due to coronavirus flight restrictions. He said, my dear daughter, the world has known worst pandemics. All over the, all these thousands of years that people live on this earth. As we came over the cholera pandemic or the Spanish flu pandemic or all the other pandemics in history. And my father loves too much the Bible. He started talking about pandemics from the Bible. Bible. The same way uh, humanity will overcome this pandemic as well. And we are very lucky to have been able to be in this situation. And I'm lucky that I'm here for you and your brother and my grandchildren and my spiritual children, um, because he has many spiritual children. He's, as I said, he's a priest and he, he, he does the Holy Confession and he does Sunday school classes, etc. 
on a note for you, for those that you don't know me, I'm not religious, but I deeply respect genuinely religious people that they really believe in their religion and they act accordingly and they love all the people in the world. So I hung up the phone on him. I said, okay, I talked with somebody who is grieving his best friend, one of his best friends. I talked with somebody who is in an endangered group for COVID. And imagine one of his friends died of COVID three days ago. And he managed to give me on a positive note. And he managed to see on the good things and the positive things behind um, this bad scenery. And I am feel so blessed and so lucky to have had him in his life, to have, to have him in my life. And I wish for all of us to be able to motivate, to modify our life and to believe in our um, uh, in the opportunities we can create for ourselves. Hardships come in life all the time. Hardships are going to come. Relationships will fall. Marriages will collapse. Collapse. People will die. Diseases will come. We might get um, a diagnosis with something that we carry on for life. For example, somebody may get a diagnosis of his diabetic, or somebody else might get a diagnosis of cancer, and they don't know. They don't. They cannot tell them for how long they can live or not. We can have difficult things in our life, really, things that if you start thinking about them from a negative aspect, you are going to collapse and allow yourself to be eaten by your worries. Trying this way of living, of uh, focusing on the positive aspect of things, of truly believing in your luck, of believing yourself to be a lucky person in life, no matter what the obstacles, no matter what the difficulties, will give you the opportunity to become the greatest person you can become. Because all of us, we can become great. Everybody in their own way. Last night, I also, when I made this video call with my parents, I also spoke with my mom. And my mom um, uh, watched one of my videos in Greek that I was talking about mistreating children in childhood and about giving positive re reinforcement in, and during the upbringing of children. And I said some things about my, my own personal experiences with my mom. And she told me, I watched your video and I want to ask you sorry for giving you hardship when you were young. Because my mother, she was brought up in a very conservative env environment, whereas my father was brought up in a very progressive environment, and her mother was being very judgmental of her. And even though my mother is also very educated, she passed on some judgment to me. And I said to her, Mom, it's okay. I really love you. I'm really happy that you ask sorry about this, but you should know that those hardships you gave me when growing up gave me the opportunity to become a psychologist because I wouldn't have become a psychologist otherwise. I would study something else like medicine, like my, my doctor, for, my brother, for example, is a medical doctor. I would go into medicine or I would go into literature or into something else. I wasn't even considering psychology when I was younger. You gave me the opportunity to become a psychologist. You gave me the opportunity to read, learn, be educated in trauma, trauma consequences, and being able to help other people through my books, through my videos, and through uh, consultation sessions to help them have a better life. So after all, it was good for me. By saying that, I don't mean that we should um, promote violence to children or psychological violence, and or that we should discriminate our children or uh, give a positive, a negative reinforcement to our children. But I'm talking about this aspect after something has already happened. It has, it has happened. It's finished. You cannot cry over spit milk. You can just find the positive into it. And I'm closing this with one um, a personal experience from my life. I'm 45 years old, so I have thousands of personal experiences. This was around the time I first read this book. It was around 2004, 2005. 
I was living alone with my kids. My kids were very young at the time. My son was like seven years old. My aunt, my daughter, like four years old. I was a single parent. I was living in a city that nobody else lived from my family, away from my family, 150 kilometers away from my family. I was living in Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus, the country I come from, and my parents and my family are situated in Paphos, which is a distant uh, town for Cyprus uh, measures, it's a small island. And it was late at night, should be like 12 midnight or 12.30, and I had managed to put my children to sleep because my children wouldn't sleep easily. I've read a book about this, about how to, the way, what I've learned by raising my children. My book is not translated into English yet, but as soon as it's translated, I will inform you. And I, I managed to put them in bed and I sat on the sofa. It was very cold. I think I had a fever and I felt very cold. So I said I will get up from the living room and I will walk to my bedroom. It was a huge, it was a loft. It was a very big flood. And I will go to my bedroom. I'll get a blanket and come back. On my way going to my bedroom, I passed through the kitchen. And I thought, maybe I should make a juice, of a lemon juice, freshly, a, a, a glass of freshly squeezed lemon juice to drink it so that I help my immune system to overcome the flu. So I made a glass of lemon juice. I went to drink it. My hand shaked, was shaking. The glass fell, it broke on the marble. Those of you who know about marble, you cannot have any acidic on the marble. It destroys it. So at that time, it was about 8, 1 a.m. in the morning. I was so tired. I had fever. I was cold. And I had to clean the floor from all this lemon that was spilled on the kitchen marble. I started laughing. And I said, what's your, what's your choices here? What's your choices here? Do you have any other choice but to start cleaning lemon from the floor? I started laughing. Love is a good defense mechanism. And I started cleaning the floor. It took about half an hour because you have to remove all the lemon and you have to swipe it again and again and again. And by the time I finished, I had a shower and my fever had gone and I felt happy. And then I was talking about it with one of my friends who is a neurologist. And he told me that in our, our nervous system has a lot of um, um, battery a lot of power, a lot of uh, stamina, which is reserved for difficult situations. And what happened to you is that you switched yourself in your, um, in your, uh, um, how I say, in Greek we say warehouses of stamina, like your battery warehouse. So you were able to give yourself the power to clean the floor and to give yourself the power to overcome the, um, the virus. So I remember this incident every time I'm, have a I'm having a difficulty, every, every time something goes wrong, and I say, I will do like I did at night. I will accept my situation. Okay, I broke the glass of lemon on the marble. Now I will clean it and life will go on. On another note, I remember now another situation around that time, I, I was very tired during 2004, 2005. I was cooking this food, very nice, um, seafood um, uh, seafood pasta and while I was cooking the pasta it was with mussels and um, and shrimps and uh, seafood while I, I put in the blender the tomatoes the fresh tomatoes to make the sauce accidentally I put in the blender one piece of plastic that was used to close the blender and because my blender was very good <laughs> It also blended the plastic that had a, a, a green color. I didn't notice. So I put the tomatoes grounded with the plastic in the food. And I look in the food and the food is inedible. And it was very well cooked. I was very tired. It was, I, was, I put too much effort on that food. What I did, I threw it all in the garbage. I ordered outside food for the kids and I said to myself, go and get a couple of hours of sleep. I called the babysitter to come and take care of the kids. I called for, uh, for takeaway and I, I usually don't buy any food from outside, but I ordered for, for delivery food. 
and I gave myself the opportunity to get some sleep and I said to myself, if something more dangerous happened, like not seeing the plastic and, and eating it and then having problems, me or the kids, it's better that I saw it and I take the opportunity to get some sleep. And I have many stories like this. Now another story is, is popping in my brain. Should I say it? Should I? <laughs> it's another similar story. I've said it in Greek. It was around the same time again. Oh my God, 2004 was a very significant year for me. I was 29 years old at the time and I was trying myself living alone in a foreign city that nobody knew me. I knew nobody. I was trying to establish myself as a psychologist there and bring my children up, uh, being a single parent and working all these hours. I, I was going to change my, my employment. I was working for the government. I had accepted my, the invitation to work for the government in 2001. And three years later, I realized that I didn't want to work for the government anymore and that I wanted to open my private practice in Nicosia. I had a private practice before in Paphos, my hometown, that many people knew me because my family were well known. So people would say, oh, the daughter of the priest is a psychologist. She has an office. Let's go to her. But nobody knew about me in Nicosia at the time. So I said to myself, I need to change my job. I cannot work in public schools anymore because I was appointed not as a psychologist. I was appointed in the position of a special education teacher that I was not um, uh, special about this. I didn't have any any specialty in doing this job. This is why I hated the job because if it was if I was appointed as a psychologist, I would love it. But I was appointed as a special needs educator, a special teacher, a special school uh, teacher, and I couldn't do it well. So I didn't feel well. And I thought that I should resign and somebody else should take the position that he or she would be able to offer more to those children in the special school. Anyway, I resigned and I made a plan. I said for six months, I will write a book. That's when was, when I, that was when I wrote my first book. I will write a book. I will publish it. And I will find a way so that people know me and come to me. And I open my office in six months. Of course, I made this plan because I knew that for six months, I would take some compensation from, for leaving my job, unpayment, uh, unemployment uh, benefit. So I started writing my book and I started knocking on doors. I was uh, always uh, writing articles for um, newspapers as when I was newspapers when I was a student in Greece. I was writing articles for newspapers in my hometown, but nobody knew me in the capital of Cyprus. So I went to newspapers, agencies, I went to TV stations. I knocked on their door and I said, hi, I'm here. I'm a psychologist. I'm good at writing. I can write articles for you for free so that people know who I am. Or I can, I can come to your TV show and talk about subjects because I was appearing on TV since 1997, but not on national television. I was on local television in my hometown. Everybody said, no, no, we're not interested. We don't. But I kept, I kept trying to make opportunities for me. My mother, which you have already understood, is a pessimist and not an optimist like my father. She would keep telling me, oh, you did such a bad choice. You left your job uh, working for the government. That was a very well paid job and a secure job. And you have to raise two children and you are being very impulsive and you don't think straight. And now what will happen? Who will come to you? Nobody knows you in Nicosia. And I kept saying to her, I have a plan and I'm working on it. I was really working on it. I was really thinking about it. I was really, I was doing my best. About two weeks before the six month period ended, I was in the gym. And while I was, I was, um, I think I was doing, uh, I was work, I was running in the gym. I saw a television script, screen ahead of me and it was a morning TV show. And I saw somebody talking on TV that I didn't like somebody that claimed to be a psychologist at the time, and she wasn't a psychologist. So I said, oh dear, I would love to be on that show, but I don't like the TV presenter. I don't like the, the, that person they, they invited there. I would love for the TV presenter to change and me to appear on that show. I wished for it. And I kept running. The next day, I had my appointment with my therapist because all therapists need therapy. And we all have therapy. 
and good therapists always go to therapy. And this, it was a route that I used to make every, that it was a Wednesday that they had the gym, every Thursday morning, I would make this route at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 to 10.50, 10.50, it was my session, and I would go to my psychologist's uh, office. I finished my psychotherapeutic session, and on my way back to my house, my, my tire bursted. I had a flat tire. I said, no problem. It's a better thing that it, my tire bursted in the city, because the next day I would travel with my kids on the highway to go and visit my hometown. So it's a good thing that the tire uh, broke now because I will fix it and my children will be safe. And so I went to this shop that was near my house that they fixed tires. There I knew the man from the tires because <laughs> I'm bumping to, I'm bumping my car into parking, parking spaces, uh, not, not in roads. Many times I needed to change my tires. I go there. And that I wasn't talking much. There was this gentleman there, and they were talking. I didn't. I didn't say anything. I was being quiet, and I expected for the man to uh, continue to, to to fix my tire and go to my house. And the man comes in. He says, "Thekla, do you know the doctor? Uh, the doctor is um, uh, this man is a doctor, and he's the owner of this building, and he's my very good friend." And he said, "Do you know Thekla? She's also a doctor." I said, "No, I'm not a doctor. I'm a psychologist." He said, "Really?" Yes, I'm a psychologist. Do you have an office? I say, I'm opening my office next week. And I told him, would you like to give me your phone number? Because usually, sometimes we need to refer, psychologists We refer people to doctors. That's why I know many doctors and I work with doctors. He said, yes, can you give me your uh, phone number? Do you, have a, um, do you have a card visit? I said, no, I didn't have it with me. I, I had printed a card, but I didn't have it with me. And I gave him my phone number. And I left. I went on my way. Saturday morning. I get a phone call from this doctor and he said, listen, you might get surprised, but I'm calling you because I am responsible for the doctors appearing on that TV show. The same TV show I saw while I was, uh, I was running at the gym and I wished that I would like to be on that TV show, but I didn't like the presenter and I didn't like the, the guests. He said, uh, the owner of the TV station is my first cousin and I am responsible for the doctors that go on this TV show. And last Wednesday, the day I wished that, um, he fired the TV presenter because she invited that person on her TV show that she wasn't a psychologist and she claimed to be a psychologist. I didn't know any of this. So now he hired a new TV presenter and they look for a new psychologist. And because you are a psychologist, would you like to be a guest, a regular guest on the TV show? I said, of course. And that's how my TV career started nationally in Cyprus. And two weeks after that, I opened my office and I made three times the money that I made while working for the government. Mm -hmm. That's not a miracle. This is how, when people believe that they are lucky, when people, people believe that they can change their luck, how they do all the necessary movements in order to create awareness around them and open the doors for better things to come around. And this also can have a very good apply on our love life. But about this on another video, because this video, oh my God, it's already 34 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you stayed until the end, if you liked my video, please share it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel if you wish. And every Friday, I aim to upload a video in English. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice weekend. Bye.